what is the story of Pads Drive Africa? What was the inspiration? Okay, <laughs> so what happened is, uh, that was in 2019, mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine, we used to school together, and uh, at that time he was in school and he was doing tourism. Mm. So normally, as part of their practice, they would go out for camping in places where you have to, like, it's hard, the life is, the situation is very hard. Yeah. And so they were taken to Kajiado County. Mm. So when he came back, at that time we had, uh, after high school, we had formed a group with my classmates. Mm. Uh, a charity group. So we used to do charities here and there. So when he came back, because he was part of that group, he came and told us the stories. Oh, you guys, you're so privileged. Uh, where, we are come, where we had gone for the camping, mm -hmm. eh, people are struggling out there. Like at Akiatu, it's a problem. This, the students are going to school with no shoes. Like he mentioned a lot of things. And then he mentioned about girls not having sanitary pads, so they have to stay at home. They have to use clothes, they have to use all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And that caught my attention. Hi guys, how are you today? Mimi Niko Fiti J Wenwe. Now I am back again with another fantastic conversation. And we said earlier in the year, on this channel this year, we are only focusing on good stories. Good stories. Stories is enough to party a vibe poa poa. And today I am back again with another guest who is doing some beautiful things in her community. Another impact story. Nilisama i mwakayote. We are focusing on impact stories because there are so many out there. We want to hear the good about us as human beings. Nasi kila wakati vitumba yambaya. So I'm just gonna get right into it and I'm gonna introduce our guest to Mpigia Makofita Fadali. Hi one boy. Hi Judy. How are you? I'm doing very fine. Karibu sana. Thank you so much for thank having you. me. Thank Karibu, thank you for honoring our invite. <laughs> thank you. Nakukubali kukuja tukayapa tu chope story. Yeah. I would like you to start by introducing yourself before now you introduce. As in, we, we, I introduced the reason why we're having this conversation. Okay, yes. yeah. all right. Yes. My full name is Susan Wamboi mm -hmm. but I prefer Wamboi, the African name. Yes. I love being an African woman. Mm -hmm. So you can call me Wamboi, Wambo, Bobo, all those, I love them. Okay. Um, I'm the CEO of Pads Drive Africa and also the founder. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I'm a project manager. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm a daughter to my parents, of course, mm -hmm. a sibling and a friend. Ah. Yeah, that's all about me. Awesome. Right now. Yeah. A young woman doing yes, very young. <laughs> amazing things. You're just about to hear about all the amazing things that you're doing. So you mentioned something. You mentioned that you're the CEO of Pads Drive Africa. Yeah. And that's the reason for our conversation today. Yeah. What is Pads Drive Africa? So Pads Drive Africa is a Christian and profit organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, what drive us or what we believe in is that uh, God has given us as human beings enough resources mm -hmm. to be able to live a life here on earth. And so it is our responsibility as human beings mm -hmm. to be able to manage these resources uh, rightfully and also equally so that everybody has them and everybody has access to them. Mm -hmm. And because of that, so um, what we do is we deal with menstrual health mm -hmm. and we work towards ensuring that every woman, every girl is able to have a sanitary pad mm -hmm. uh, and is, uh, has, has the rightful information mm -hmm. as much as menstrual health is concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much, especially now that we just celebrated Menstrual Hygiene Day. Yeah. Uh, just a few weeks back, I feel this is a very good conversation to have now because yeah. what you're doing is amazing work. I'll give a backstory. I can okay. go backstory to mm -hmm. the guys watching. Uh, so, Wamboi, we have interacted before, but only via DM on social media. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, interactions, actually, the first, inter actually, the, both, in both or three, maybe like three times we've interacted yeah. via DM, right? Yeah. And the first time we interacted, I interacted with Wamboi via DM on Instagram was when she shared a poster for uh, Pads Drive. Uh, she was having in Kajiado yes. County, yeah. right? Yeah. And of course, people know me and Mumbus for our conversations mm -hmm. around menstrual hygiene. We are big advocates of yeah. menstrual hygiene. So the first time you shared the poster, I, I uh, of course, you requested I post it on my stories, and I did. Yeah. And then you came again, back again, and I reposted. And I was like, it got <laughs> to a point where I was curious. I was like, hey. 
Because in a sound, in a, in, it sounds like you're a young girl who's trying yeah. to do something for her community. Mm-hmm. And then we met. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it was by pure coincidence, yeah. right? Nilikuwa nimeenda kushuka nyole kwa Mel. By the way, Mel ako mahali hapa. Nilikuwa nimeenda kushuka nyole kwa Mel. And then she, we, our paths, hapo tu kwa one of the stalls, we happened to meet. Yeah. And she told me, oh, I'm a boy, you love a part drive. And when you mentioned that, it stuck. Wow. But then, you know, it never, I never forgot. Actually, when you called me, I was so surprised when you told me, this one boy, and I'm like, I, I told you, I'm going to meet you again. And you're like, yes, you're going to meet again. I remember I, we met. Yes. I was like, you mean you remember me? Like, I was so surprised. Ah, and I was so of, honored. <laughs> you because of the work that you've been doing on social media, and the two interactions that we had mm-hmm. of course now when we met and you introduced yourself and you told me who you are yeah. that name stuck wow. because of the good things that you were doing so i am very curious one boy and this is the question <laughs> that i've wanted to ask you mm-hmm. you're very young in your 20s there are many 20 year olds i know hakuna mtu mwenye anafanya kazi yenye na impact society yake ama community yake mm-hmm. most of the 20 uh, year olds i know right now are either furthering their studies yeah. or their careers so it's very interesting to come across a very young person who is doing things for the community who's not focused on themselves mm-hmm. but on the community that surrounds her so i really want to find out what is the story of pad strive africa what was the inspiration Okay, so what happened is, uh, that was in 2019, mm-hmm. I have a friend of mine, we used to school together, and uh, at that time he was in school and he was doing tourism. Mm. So normally, as part of their practice, they would go out for camping in places where you have to, like, it's hard, the life is, the situation is very hard, yeah. and so they were taken to Kajiado County. Mm. So when he came back, at that time we had, uh, after high school, we had formed a group with my classmates mm. uh, a charity group so we used to do charities here in pair so when he came back because he was part of that group he came and told us their stories oh you guys you're so privileged uh, where we are come where we had gone for the camping mm. eh, people are struggling out there like at a kiatu, it's a problem this, the students are going to school with no shoes like he mentioned a lot of things and then he mentioned about girls not having sanitary pads so they have to stay at home they have to use clothes they have to use all sort of things mm-hmm. and that's caught my attention and funny enough actually uh, the whole team nobody like put so much attention on that yeah. they were like hey let's look for people to donate shoes donate clothes and we take for them mm-hmm. but for me it stuck with me like how is it that someone doesn't have a sanitary pad mm-hmm. like for me i was so amused i started thinking about how would i manage my periods if i didn't have a sanitary pad. Yeah. Yes, I've been privileged. I've, I've been able to have a sanitary pad every time I have my periods, mm. but I came to think about it. How mm. is that even even possible? And well, I assumed I assumed it. You know the way you think about something and then ah, mm. So I I didn't think about it a lot until I started seeing on news uh girls are getting pregnant, mm. blah 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 and all sort of issues. And then I thought to myself, what can I do? Because at that time I was in college, yeah. I think my second year. Mm. And I'm like, so what can I do? I mean, I don't have a job. I'm still depending on my parents. Mm. I utter my, you know, pesa yangu ya upkeep. Cannot be able to like help that much. And so if, I believe this is God who directed me to, directed me to do this. Mm. And something told me, uh, how about you create a platform? Mm. Well, for you, you don't have the capacity mm. but how about you create a platform where you bring women actually my first thought were women mm. i bring women together mm. and then we just raise and i mean everybody give me one part give me one part let's take to kajiado and i told my friend about it a friend of mine and she was like yeah that's a very nice idea you should start and all that mm. but then again you know at times when when we have something inside of us we mm. take time to like Go for it. it. Yeah, go yes. for it. So I stayed like for a whole year. That was in 2019. I stayed the whole year without actually uh, thinking about it. Mm. And then later on, uh, the friend of mine that I told her about the story, mm. she DM'd me and sent me uh, a newspaper of uh, some girls. I don't know. It's in Western. Mm. They were using blankets for their periods. Mm. And I was like, what? 
that that it, it was like a confirmation that mm-hmm. my help is needed. Yeah. Like I cannot afford to just be staying like that. Yes, this a girl who is actually struggling. Mm. So in 2020, that is when I decided I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, mm. but I'm just I'll just start by talking to people, my friends. That is, I'll just tell them, you know what? Nipati ni kilam two pads kada here and there. Pick it up from there. That's when I decided that mm. I have to do this. Mm. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I just have to start. Yes. Uh, so I talked to a few of my friends mm. and I really appreciate them because all of them are young just like me. Mm. Like there's no one who is not even above 30. Yeah. So I, I talked to them, I told them this is the idea that I have and I want to do this and this and this. Would you guys help me? Mm. And they came in handy. Then we started mobilizing people to say dear pads, you know, kilam tu. Kipatana kilam tu. Just yeah. give me, like we used to like literally beg, beg people, yeah. give me two pads, ni 50 mm. bob peke. Oh, imagine 50 bob peke, okay, mm. you know. And we started talking to them. I remember the first the first project we need, we did, we needed 180 packets mm. only. <laughs> 180 packets of sanitary pads and we really struggled. It was a budget of around 10,000. Yeah. And we really struggled to get that. Mm. Actually, I remember that time, 2020, that is when Corona hit. Yes. So um, I was like, what? Corona ime kuja. And this, we have girls who are depending on us. Mm. What, what is going to happen? Like, And it's funny enough, like when you want to start something, that's when a challenge comes and you're like, am I sure I really want to do this? Am I, these are just signs of, you know, such <laughs> kind of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, ay, jamani, yeah. you know. And so, but we decided, I, my, my friends really put, I have friends who really believed in mm. what I carried. They're like, we have to do it no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's corona because after all, periods don't wait for any pandemic to yeah. end or such kind of a thing. And so um, we we raised the, the sanitary pads with the struggles that uh, that was there and all that. Mm. And then because that time, uh, Barabara was in Afungwa, mm. I remember we were saying, Tutaenda, by faith, we'll just go to get to our ambia kitu napele kamsa dan we are girls who are waiting on us and luckily enough we never got any roadblock at oh, any really? point yeah so um we took the sanitary parts to the girls we got to listen to the oh actually before that we had to do a a pre-visit first mm. to be able to understand where is this place because it's a place i've never been yeah. and all that we get to understand who are these girls how mm. does the community look like and all those kind of stuff and then now we did our first project and then there's something i've missed saying mm. um when when i decided to start the the initiative mm. i didn't start it as an organization it was not in my mind like i want to start an organization mm. is I have never thought of it. Like, it's nothing I've ever been interested in. Mm. I was just like, I'm just telling people mm. to any parts. Ni mimi to tuna, ni mimi tu. wangu exactly. To peleke ni two parts, just like that. Mm. But then uh, you get a friend who's telling you, ah, what do we call, what, what are we calling this thing? Yes. Someone else comes and tells you, can I create for you a poster? Mm. Another one comes and tells you, can I do this for you? Mm. And all that. And like, oh, yes, that's a good idea. Someone else comes and tells you, can I help you with this? And, all, and that is how the organization started. Mm coming up, but it was never in my mind that I'm going to form uh, an organization. I just wanted to help just as one boy mm. and, all, and all that. And I, I just had this strong feeling, and I still have this strong feeling in me even right now, that um, these girls don't deserve the life they are living. Mm. And I felt like, Lazima, there has to be a solution. Yeah. Like, there has to be a way that uh, we can be able to help one another. And I believe so much in communities whereby um, if I don't have, you can be able to help me when I don't mm-hmm. have. And when I have, I can be able to help the other person. And so I felt there was there was help somewhere, only that we didn't know how to trace it and mm-hmm. all that. And so we did uh, our first project with the corona and all that. Though we were not able to meet the students, mm. but I thank God for the head teacher who was there, a very sincere head teacher, a genuine heart. Mm. Yani, he's just so willing to help his students and yeah. help the community and all that. And we took the sanitary pads and that was our, our first project. Mm. Though we had a challenge because uh, getting to create a rapport with the community, it's, uh, it's in Maasai land. Mm. Mm. And... Um, one of the challenges that we, we get is, you know, like, why are you trespassing to a land? Maybe yes. you want to come and grab, you know, yes. when they see, they just, uh, um, uh, Maasai, they value their culture mm. a lot. Mm. And also they value their properties a lot, like their cows, their land and mm. everything. So when they see 
any person, especially with a car coming their yes. way, they're like, what do you want? What are you looking for? <laughs> and mm. so we we struggled a lot to create a, a rapport with them, getting uh, a way through because they don't have like a main road. Mm. It's a very interior place. You yeah. should come one day. Mm. It's a very interior place. Yeah. So getting Ukoivi and Dani, we have to use someone's land and all that. Mm. And so yeah. it was really a struggle. But we managed and it has been a journey. And that was the very first time you That was the very What's first. What's the name of the school? Eremit Primary School. Eremit Primary School. It's in Kajedo West. Ah, so how many students were there at that particular time? So, so actually, were there 180 pads enough? Um, the pads were less than the number of girls. Only. Okay, so the number of girls were 60. Mm -hmm. And so we planned to give them for three months. So okay. that's why we collected 180 packets of pads. Mm -hmm. So uh, each girl, a packet for three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A packet for... A packet for a month, so a three, month three, three packets for three months. Yes. Yeah. Ah, so uh, that was the first time you went there. Yes. How has it been now since that first initiative? Okay, so it's been it's been a it's a journey of growth, mm. and I think when uh, okay, first of all, I, I want to acknowledge that. Uh, that okay when I started the organization, mm. God gave me an assurance mm. because I remember that day when when I decided okay I'm doing this I I really cried because I was like, okay, what am I really doing like you know actually even the first project we did mm. I had to use my my upkeep mm. and I made sure I don't tell my parents because yes. <laughs> they'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know I had to find a way how I'm gonna survive through that semester, uh, but I I had the assurance from mm. God that. Because he told me, you don't have the capacity, mm -hmm. but I want you to create a platform mm -hmm. where I'm going to send people to come. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many people who want to help, but they don't have a platform. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to help you create a platform, and then I'm going to bring people to you. Mm -hmm. So after we did the first project, and I came, I posted, thank you guys for your donations. Nee, 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 nee. We went, blah, 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 blah. And so everybody was like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, I want to come next time. I want to support. Yeah, when are you going back again there? Mm -hmm. All those kind of stuff. I remember I had a primary a primary friend. He saw when we were doing the second project. He saw he saw the poster like ille poster too mna tengene zakitu shedi shedi. You know, you don't have the skill and una tengene zatu kakitu too and all that. And he saw it and he's like, Ah, uh, Susan, can I make for you a better poster? Mm -hmm. I was like, Yes, of course. And he's like, Do you have a logo? No, we don't actually. <laughs> you know, do you have a logo? Yeah. No, we don't. Yes, can I make it for you? Mm. Yeah, please do. Then someone else comes and tells me, uh, do you have your vision and statement, uh, vision statement mm. and mission statement written down? No. Can I, can you come to my office? That's then, one of my mentors. Yeah. Can you come to my office? I help you mm. draft it down and all that. Then a friend of mine, oh, we need to come up with a cover. You know, like people yes. just started showing up and telling me we need to do this. We need this and this here and here. We mm. need to brand the organization so that people can trust it mm. and all those kind of things. And uh, at that point now, I was like, things are just happening. Mm. I don't even know how things are happening, but they're just happening. And people started coming on board. They started campaigning, giving me ideas of how we can mobilize mm. for the sanitary pads. And um, that's how we did the second. I remember actually the second project, I had so many people who tagged along. Mm. And all of them are young people. Mm. Like, <laughs> they're just, all, like I can assure you, Judy, mm. there's no one, I think it's only one person who was over 30 years. Mm. The rest are 25 and below. Yeah. All of them, 20 to 25 years. I don't even know how, where they were getting the money, mm. but uh, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that I have the opportunity to grow with them. All mm. of us, we are growing together. So they tagged along and we did the second project. And now this second project, how many pads had you been able to raise? So we are still working with uh, with um, with the sixty girls. Yeah. Okay, so um, a friend of mine told me that uh, if you want to make impact, you have to be consistent. Mm, that's true. And so he advised and told me that uh, if you really want to see impact in the lives of these people, mm. be consistent with a community at a time. Mm. Don't just do like uh, today you do this school, tomorrow you do another, another, another school and all that. Mm. And I took the advice. And so we decided we are going to deal with just 
this, the this one school this school mm. just this school and if you're going to broaden it we broaden it to the community just mm. the community around the school mm. but not any other place yeah. and so we were still working with the 60 girls mm. and then later on we 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 discovered that mm. okay I'm giving this girl a sanitary pad but she has a sister at home mm. she has a mother at home yeah. so even if I give you three packets of pads mm. in my mind I'm thinking oh this girl is sorted for the next three yeah. months but of course you you cannot be having a sanitary pad and your sister is struggling. Mm, so you just share, share it and then to to tafanya but mm. you know. So we realized that there was that problem and so we included the the big sisters mm. and the women also because mm. the women were also going through the same challenge. Yeah. So we started doing the whole community for as long as you are a woman in Eremits just come so, but we would, we would use the school as the center mm. so just come for the program mm. and we're going to give you the sanitary pads so uh we had uh roughly 250 to 300 mm. at most uh, both women and girls in the community so yeah. for the girls they would go up to a hundred at most and then the rest of the women mm. and also their sisters some teen moms, you know, there are they are, they are some that just got pregnant and they mm. dropped out of school. You remember that time, it's still an issue even right now where girls exchange sex for for a part. Yeah. So there was that issue. There was also an issue of, you know, illiteracy matters to do with sexuality and all that. Mm. So most girls engage in sex and they get pregnant, pregnant very early. And so we have a lot of dropouts and all that. So we would also include those girls. Mm. Yeah. So how many, uh, what's the number that you're working with right now at the moment? So at the moment, um, okay, now I have, there's a story behind that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for the last, we are four years old right now. Mm. So every mid community, we had uh, 250 to 350, depending with the, uh, uh, depends with the turn up. Mm. Because at times we would have 300 or even a plus. Mm. At times they would turn up as 250 because of so many issues that goes on. Mm. Uh, so that's the, the number for every mid. Mm. And then I think uh, in uh, the third, third or fourth project, mm we had to include another school, another co the next community. Mm -hmm. Reason being because, okay, Nika Moskie, Eshule ile wanapatia na pads. And you know pads is a precious thing to them. By the Eshule yetu, kuna tu wanakujanga wita pads driver wanapatia na sanitary pads. Ukuje. And because of course they know we are helping the whole community. So utakuja tuwe uki. Utakuja tuwe. I mean, I'm part of this community mm. and all that. So we realized we have some girls coming from another community called Enkoire Roy. Mm. So they are walking all the distance to come and get the sanitary pad. Mm. So that was the fourth, the fourth project. We decided uh, how about we start another community. So we do two of them mm. concurrently mm. because they, they would walk for a very long distance. Mm. A very long, and you know the sun they are like it's it's a very long distance for them to walk. So we decided instead of them coming here, we'll let's just them. go to them. So mm. we would do co concurrently both the both the communities, mm. and um, that was the, that was in the fourth that was in the fourth project. Mm. So after we identified the new community and Koiroi, mm. we we started with the school girls first. We because we need to go a step at a time. Yes. So we started the school girls which are around 100 mm. to 150 girls. Mm. And so we did, uh, so far we've done 11 projects. Mm. So from the fourth project, that's when we started with, uh, now we are doing Eremit and Enkoiroi. And, yes. yeah. and then along the way in the 10th project, uh, we came up with a sustainable solution mm. for Eremit community. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason why we took a long time before we could get a sustainable solution is because there's a problem of water in mm. the area. And the only sustainable solution we could think about was the reusable sanitary pads. Yes. Uh, and we couldn't give them that if mm. they don't have the water. Clean water. Yes. But uh, last year, uh, they were able to get access to water mm. through the government okay. in that area. So they were, they were able to get access to clean water and... Um, that's when you were able to give them sanitary pads last year, September. The reusable The reusable ones. pads. Okay. So we gave them the, the reusable pads and now it was like, uh, we've done a good job here. And uh, apart from just getting the sustainable solution, mm. you know, uh, the, the, the four year span mm. with this community, you know, engaging with them, having conversation with them, we created a lot of impact. Mm. And I can assure you there's a lot of change that has happened in that community. So uh, we give them the reusable, the reusable sanitary pads and now we are left with Enquiry Roy. So for mm. now we are dealing with Enquiry Roy community. Mm. Uh, also along the way we are able to now 
also uh, involve the women. Mm. So we are doing the women and also the the sisters, the, the big sisters, the big sisters, sisters and the school mm. school girls. Ah, yeah. So right now at the second community, I cannot pronounce that name. The Kikuyu even ah. will <laughs> not be able to pronounce that name. <laughs> En Kenka and Ko- En Koire Roy. En Koire Roy. Where yes. I tried. <laughs> How many uh, what's the number that you are uh, looking at right now? Right now I'll say 200 to 250. Mm-hmm. Uh that's for the women and the girls. Mm. And also uh we realized for us to have a collective uh impact or change, mm. we also need to include the boys mm. because they also play a very great role when it comes to uh, menstrual health and the stigma, the yes, everything. Yes. So normally we, serve, we 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 do a program for the girls and mm. also a program for, for the, the boys. boys as well. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now, one boy is. I'm listening to you. I have a question. Kuna swali twina ni sumbwa kwa kili. And this question is, what is what is it that you think is in you that makes you want to help your community? Is it because of the way you were raised up? Or is it because of, because you've said you've never had a personal experience, you've never not had a pad yeah. during your menses. So I'm curious to understand why. Because this is what I have. Together, we we have the ability, yeah. but it takes a special person to have that kind of conviction and actually actualize on it. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to wonder what is it about you that made you want to do this for. for for that particular community, and it's a community that you've you've ne- you've, <laughs> you've not you've never you've eh? kizungu who come before? Yeah, Cindy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know you're asking me that question, mm. and I'm wondering, okay, what do I say? Because uh, mostly when people tend to help, mm-hmm. it's because there's a story behind. Like probably I went through stigmatization. Maybe I was not able to get a pad when I was young. That's why I'm doing this. Mm. But for me, it's very different. Um, I would say it is what God created me for. Mm. Because from from a young age, I've always wanted to do anything that has to do with community and helping people. You see, like even after high school, mm. we formed a charity organization. Yes. Like it's something that has really been driving me. Mm. And actually, when you're saying that uh, this is a community I don't know, mm. it gets to a point I ask God. God, me, I don't even know these people. <laughs> you know, when actually when, when times get really tough, you mm. know, it's because it's not easy at times. I'm like, why am I struggling for people I don't yeah. know? I question where is this coming mm. from? I don't understand what is actually driving me and all that. Because um, even as you have said, mm. I mean, at my age right now, I should be focused with my studies, mm. you know, building myself and all that. But I ask myself the same question at times, like, uh, why, what is this that is in me that is driving me towards this? No matter how hard I try to stop, mm. it's still driving me towards that. And for me, I believe this is what I was created to what do. do. Yeah. This is my purpose here on earth, mm. just to just to help that one person. Mm. My, my, my life is connected to someone's destiny. Mm. And so, yeah, I don't have like a, a background, I'll say that... Uh, it's because I was raised this way. That's why I'm doing this. I would mm. say it's purely God's purpose over my life. Mm. That's that's why I do this. Wow. I yeah. love that. God's purpose over your life. Yes. I think that's the perfect answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, because it's not, it's not a lot of people that would go, would go that mile to just do what you've done. Yeah. Especially when you say the community, koko interior, nini, nini. Tu angenda marakonza, sama hii, uko serudita So now, um, we've spoken, and I know you are on a mission yeah. to support more girls. And you even have a specific number yeah. <laughs> that you're targeting. Uh, and this number is a thousand girls. Yeah. So I would like to know why a thousand? And uh, if you could tell us more about this particular mission that you're on. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, number one, okay, menst- uh, period poverty mm-hmm. is a great deal in our country right now. And uh, getting to listen to the stories that just go on, you know, um, not even qua social media. I believe apart from what we see qua social media, mm-hmm. qua news, there are so many people who actually struggle 
like I look good, have my makeup, mm-hmm. you know, and then my peers just come poor. Yeah. I don't even have that 50 shillings. I don't know where, to, right now it's 70 shillings, mm-hmm. 80 shillings. I don't even have that 80 shillings. And so many people are actually struggling. And I'm looking at it like um, just that small thing, mm-hmm. you know, Kitu Mtu Nezona maybe it's just lack of a, a sanitary pad, mm. but it can really affect where you're supposed to go. Mm. It can affect your destiny because we've seen uh, these girls, their lives are being just in a rebuwa to just because someone didn't have a, a sanitary pad. Mm. And so we decided that we want to reach to at least a thousand girls mm. in this year. Mm. And that's quite a big number. <laughs> it's not like, I, I mean, we've been, um, we've been handling. 350 at most mm. girls, but now we want to reach out to at least a thousand girls. And that means us reaching out to more communities. Mm. Because remember, we are not just picking a thousand girls, give them sanitary pads, and then we come and tell you guys we've given a thousand girls pads, yeah, we've uh, we've done our nini. No, yeah. that's not the point. Because for us, we want to like interact with their lives. Mm. We want to see the change mm. in their lives beyond just giving you a sanitary pad. Yeah. So a thousand girls slash women, mm. that means that we need to take up more communities. Mm. And we believe we have that capacity because mm. we've been able to handle two communities concurrently. We believe we can be able to take up maybe two more communities. Mm. And we we start running our programs mm. all throughout the all throughout the year. Oh. Yeah. I like that. And I like the fact that, you know, it, it goes beyond just giving this one part. Eh? Yeah. The long game is creating a, something that's sustainable for these women. True. Yeah, because raising pads every day might not be yeah. the most sustainable thing to do. Yeah. So working to get to a point where you can, you know, come up with the first community. Mm. Easy words in any confused. Eremit. Eremit. <laughs> yes. Eremit. Mm, we are now, Eremit is in a good place where they can a very now, good place. you know, focus on other things. Yeah, true. But menstrual hygiene and menstrual products are no longer a an problem issue, yeah. that they are experiencing. Mm-hmm. So my question to you is, what can I do as Judy? Because I know you have your community, your friends who come through, who've been helping you um, achieve everything that you've been able to achieve. But I also want to know, what can I do as Judy to help you attain this goal of a thousand girls? And I must say, you're, because you've already done like half, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like if you, re- if you used to do like 300, 350, and, uh, and, and, <laughs> and Kaira Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not attend. It's about 250. No, she has surpassed the, yeah. yeah, the 500 mark. So you're doing a good job. So how can we help as Team Bim Kuru Genzi. Yeah, so mm-hmm. how you can help is uh, you support us by donating a pad. Mm-hmm. A pad. I'm not even asking for donate so many pads. Yeah. We just start with just one. Just one packet. One packet of pad mm-hmm. because it means a lot to us and mm-hmm. it means a lot to, to those girls. And um, uh, I normally tell my team mm-hmm. that uh, this, this pad is a leeway for us to, you know, because someone could be seeing a pad yeah but actually it's just it's like a vehicle mm. it's a it's it's giving us a leeway to be able to create a bigger impact mm. than actually the sanitary pad yeah. so probably you could be saying like i'm just giving a sanitary pad and that is it but you have no idea you giving that sanitary pad what mm. it does to this girl because yeah. it will keep her in school it will it will give her back her dignity mm. it will uh show her that people care. Mm. She'll have another perspective of life and all that, and she'll be able to actually reach out to her dreams and all that. So um, what Judy can do, mm. and Judy's team, mm. <laughs> is donate a sanitary pad. Okay. Yes. So do you accept um, these donations uh, as the pads themselves? Like I can go into a supermarket, mm-hmm. buy 10 packets, mm-hmm. Then you lose a in a zileta wapi Yeah. And I would also assume that you do accept the donation in a monetary form. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody is not able, because we took on our, our our audience in diaspora, yeah. so somebody might not be able to directly at Kenya. Mm-hmm. They they may want to just 
kituma ka kitu kadogo okay, yeah. do you have channels for where people can donate yeah we do mm-hmm. so you can either give in kind donation that is physical sanitary mm. pads or you can just give monetary okay uh donations so for the physical pads where is the drop zone we don't have a drop zone mm-hmm. right now what you do is you just contact us mm-hmm. and then we plan on picking them up okay yes sawa sawa ndio namba yao hapo si ni namba yako ama kuna nyingine yes yes <laughs> <laughs> so we will leave uh, one boy's number here yeah. for anyone who would like to just buy the pads and then contact her atakwambia utazipeleka yeah. wapi na mtu mwingine anataka kutuma ka kitu so we have a pay bill mm-hmm. that is pay bill 247247 mm-hmm. account 5 547620 Sema tena tutaziandika hapa kwa screen Pay bill 247247 mm-hmm. Five, account 547620 Awesome yeah all right hiyo tumeshika hapo kwa sababu i feel the reason why i i felt i need to have this conversation with you was it to first understand why you're doing this thing because you're young mm-hmm. and what we young work focused on growing themselves So I really needed to understand that and also to to see how we can come through. Yeah. Yeah, cuz uh doing uh raising uh being able to uh, raise money to buy a thousand pads. Pia sio pesa kidogo. Hapo una need pesa. Yeah. It needs a, a good chunk of money. So sisi nataka tu kukwambia sisi kama wa audience yeah bim kurugenzi tutacheza kama sisi and i want to be the first person <laughs> don't give me that far but me i want to be the first person who does this thing na crew yangu hapa kina dolina spikes na stee na madi na michi wote najua watacheza kama si ndio eh hey, to support girls wa kajiado county eh hey, so i just ask you to give me that nini again good sent but is in the message but but tell the killer to tell me mend up yeah but one boy i just want to tell you may god give you the grace to continue doing what you do i only i only i believe honestly hii yako tu ni mungu tu anaweza kupatia grace kuendelea because i can imagine it's not an easy thing to do but keep doing it i love that you know x and you accepted the fact that you feel it's your purpose on this earth to do this thing that you're doing the good in the community yeah, yeah. na mungu akuzidishie amen na sisi kama mimi unajua mahali pa kunipata <laughs> yeah eh hey, so anytime you feel you need my support in any way una yeah, una niambia so tu okay. yeah. we also have match oh yes like yeah. whatever you're wearing easy yeah. tunaweza zipata wapi uh, also just call oh call the me. number yeah we call the number and it's t-shirts and what else Right now we just have a t-shirt. How much are they going for? 1000 shillings. 1000 shillings ndio hiyo. Just match at the number number ya one boy if yeah. you would like to support through the match. Yeah. Right? Because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming whatever uh, money comes through the merchandise also yeah. goes True. into supporting yeah. the girls. Yeah. Awesome. So if you'd like to support through the ma- the merchandise the t-shirts call one boy here. Yeah. Sindi? Yes. Yes. Atacheza kama yeye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank And keep doing too. what you're doing. Yeah. And I'm so yeah. gu- I'm so glad that finally we got to have this conversation. <laughs> yeah. I'm yes. so happy that okay. <laughs> I'm so happy that I finally got to sit with you. Mm. Honestly, um I believe it is just divine, just God's connection because uh you know the way you just imagine mm. na tukipatana Judy to Kitty Chin to Ong. You know like I've heard had that picture in What? mind like literally i'm just sitting i'm thinking like train it to sign a ndio mungu alisema wakati wa mungu ndio god's time is perfect and i'm like wow yeah. so god just had my prayer from my mind like mm. yeah so i'm really grateful I'm to so god glad. i'm so glad you had this conversation continue yes. making this world a period friendly world yeah. that was the theme for mm. menstrual hygiene yeah. a period a period, period friendly, friendly world. world yes na sisi kama sisi now uh, our audience yeah. when they watch this particular episode yes whatever amount of money you can contribute by the way ufikiria ile kitu unatoa hata five bob ni yeah. kidogo it goes a long way right Very true. Yeah. yeah and you're all hoping to make our world a period friendly world yes. thank you so much one boy thank, thank you, you. <laughs> and god bless you Amen. and continue doing the amazing work thank you so much Sindia? yeah ah, was it? guys right. <laughs> until next time from one boy and i ni Bye bye. See ya. <laughs>